So today's January 11th, 2013. I'm just going to circle the date on my little calendar here. And let's say I came home from work and I just felt really lousy, just awful. You know, fevers, sore throat, cough, body aches, you name it. This is the first day I've been feeling like this. And up until now, you know, since the new year started, let's say I was feeling really great. You know, I had no symptoms. I was going to work feeling myself, right? So all these days I was feeling good. And then all of a sudden the 11th hit and I just got, you know, all of a sudden these symptoms, right? So I, I'm already kind of suspecting the flu based on what we know. It kind of started abruptly. I've got the, the symptoms for it. And a few questions start popping up in my head. I mean, the first question I want to know is, you know, when can I expect to start feeling better, right? That's usually the first thing people want to know. So let's think about what we know about the flu in terms of how long the symptoms usually last, because that's going to help us predict when I can expect to start feeling myself again. So we know that usually symptoms last for, let's say, three to seven days. So I'm going to say, okay, you know, all these days I'm going to expect to feel kind of the same. Maybe, you know, I, I might start feeling a little bit better by the 16th or 17th, but that would be seven days. So these are the days I can expect to feel kind of lousy. And on average, I should start feeling myself again maybe by the 18th and 19th. I should start feeling kind of the, the way I normally do. So according to this calendar, I would start feeling better by January 18th. That would be my kind of target date. And this isn't exact, right? This is kind of just a rough idea. So what's the next thing that people usually try to figure out about the flu? They always want to know who did they get it from. They always kind of want to um, figure out who the culprit was, who gave the flu to them. So I'm no different. I want to know who did I get it from. And so I think back and I say, well, you know, I felt good on the 10th and I felt pretty lousy on the 11th. And your instinct might be to say, well, of course, I probably got it on January 10th on Thursday. But in fact, you have to go a little bit uh, further back. You know, sometimes you can get it back as far as four days. So I'm going to circle the days that I could have potentially gotten the flu from somebody. And it turns out it could have been any time this week. So I'm going to write that down. So January 7th to January 10th. That's kind of the window in which somebody gave me the flu. Now, how do I know that I got it from somebody? Maybe I got it from the doorknob or maybe I got it from, you know, the remote control that someone was touching. And those kinds of environmental objects, sometimes you can get diseases from there. But with the flu, you generally get it from another person. And the reason is, is because you've got this RNA that's protected by an envelope. Remember this, this green layer here, this double layer is a lipid or a fat bilayer. It's got two layers of lipid or fat. And this is what we've been calling our envelope, right? This is the envelope. Now, because it's got an envelope, it means that the virus is actually more sensitive to the environment. The main way then that the influenza virus will get you sick is when you get it directly from another person because this envelope actually makes it very sensitive to the environment. It doesn't really do well when it's out in the environment by itself. So usually you get it directly from somebody. Maybe they cough or they sneeze. Maybe they get it on their hands and they shake your hand, usually directly from another sick person. So really, if I want to know where I got it from, I got to brainstorm and think, you know, who did I encounter between January 7th and January 10th that was sick? Now, I also want to know who could I have given the flu to? You know, I'm a conscientious person. I don't want to give the flu to other healthy people if I can avoid it. It turns out you can actually spread the flu. I'm going to circle it in purple here one day before you even have symptoms. So on the 10th of January, this is the day before I was sick, when I was actually feeling really healthy, I could have already be spreading the flu to other people on that day, on January 10th. And of course, all these days where I'm sick, I could also spread the flu. And that's more intuitive because, you know, I've got sneezing and coughing and other symptoms. But the interesting one is that on January 10th through the 17th, I could have actually spread the flu around. So January 10th, which is again a day before my symptoms through the 17th, I could have started spreading the flu. So to know exactly who I gave the flu to, I've got to really brainstorm and think, well, who did I interact with on January 10th, right? Starting with that date. Well, of course, I see my family every day, right? So family. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a worker, an employee. So my coworkers, I would see them. 
And there are other folks too, right? Like friends. I may, maybe not yet, but perhaps I might have dinner or meet up with some friends, or I might actually even see some strangers. You know, sometimes I like to take the bus and I may see some strangers or I might shake someone's hand uh, randomly. And so these are all the different folks who I've got to brainstorm and think about in terms of who I might give the flu to or who I may have already given the flu to maybe yesterday, January 10th. So now let me actually bring up a little bit more canvas, make some space, and think about these groups of people who I may interact with. You know, in terms of family, you know, for me, my closest family is my, my fiance. So I live with my fiance and I'm going to draw a picture of my fiance here. And my fiance is generally healthy. And so that's her right there. And then, of course, there are some other folks. Let's say some coworkers. Maybe, maybe I have a coworker I'm going to do in a different color who is over here also feeling pretty good and looks healthy, but actually has diabetes. You know, has diabetes, which is uh, an important medical condition. And then let's say I have some family friends. I'm going to draw a friend here. Here's my friend, and my friend happens to be pregnant right now. So this is my friend and she is pregnant over here. And she's got, of course, then a little fetus inside of her. So this is my pregnant friend and my pregnant friend, let's say, has a two-year-old daughter. So a little two-year-old daughter over here, two-year-old, and my friend herself is pregnant. So I've got my coworker with diabetes, I've got a pregnant friend and a two-year-old daughter. And finally, let me actually go to strangers. Let's say I was actually on the bus or maybe I'm going to ride the bus and here's a stranger on the bus and this stranger is in a wheelchair. This is a wheelchair here. So this is a stranger who's riding on the bus with me one day and perhaps I help her off, you know, and she thanks me by shaking my hand. So perhaps this elderly lady shakes my hand and she's a stranger to me, but now I've potentially given her the flu as well. So while I had the flu, I actually came into contact with some people that we would consider high risk, right? I've drawn for you now someone with a comorbidity, which is diabetes, meaning they have some medical condition, someone who's pregnant, a young child, and someone who's very old. And of course, over here we have my fiance and she's healthy and you know has no medical conditions. But do you think she's going to be too happy if she finds out that I gave her the flu? Probably not, right? So she's not going to be too happy with me either. So it's really important for me to keep all these different people in mind and know that I don't want to give other people the flu, especially people that are high risk. These are high risk individuals, high risk. So why do we care so much about these high-risk individuals? Well, it's because they develop complications of flu. And this is what it really boils down to. You remember, we initially talked about kind of all the hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. and around the world that get hospitalized for the flu, and then the numbers of people that die from the flu. Well, overwhelmingly, it's people in this group, this high-risk group. And the things that they get, the kind of complications they get, are, are many. Actually, flu leads to many different types of complications. And I'm going to draw out just a few of them for you. I don't want to give you an exhaustive list, but I want you to at least get an appreciation for the kinds of things we're talking about. So, for example, let's say these are your lungs. And I'm drawing two branches of your lungs. This is, let's say, going to your, this is going to your left lung, your left lung. And the other branch is going to your right lung. So this is your trachea splitting up, right? And you know that the flu, the influenza, is going to affect the cells in your respiratory tree. So it's going to affect these cells and it's going to cause inflammation. You're going to get a big immune response. And if that response is really big, let's say you have a big response, and if it's around these kind of airways here, these bronchioles, let me actually extend this out a little bit so you can at least appreciate where the arrow is going. If the response is really strong in the bronchioles, we call that bronchitis, bronchitis. So someone might actually develop bronchitis as a result of getting the flu. Now, someone else might actually have a big inflammatory reaction in these little air sacs. You know, your, your lungs end in thousands and thousands of little air sacs. And if that happens, then you might call that pneumonia. 
You might say, well, this person has pneumonia. Finally, you have smooth muscle. Actually, lots and lots of it. Smooth muscle that kind of wraps around the bronchioles. And sometimes with the flu, you actually can trigger twitchiness of that smooth muscle. So it starts spasming. And when that happens, we know that sometimes as an asthma attack. So you can actually get an asthma attack related to the flu. So all sorts of things like this can happen. And it's awful, right? These are things that can actually land you in the hospital or can cause death as well. So these are the kinds of complications. And there are other ones, things like you know ear infections and sinus infections and many, many other things as well. But here, I just want to show you a few of the complications that people get and show you and remind you that it's usually the high-risk people that you have to worry about.